Okay. And um, where you were born, I went to high school. Okay, Angela Barnes, and I was born in Temple, Texas, and I went to high school at Temple High School and graduated in 1975. What were you doing in 1965? Ooh, 1965. I was, um, let's see, three, I was eight years old. I was in six, seven, eight. I was in third grade. I was at St. Mary's Elementary School in Temple, Texas, attending third grade, okay. living on 7th Street. And what role have you uh, played in the city of Pflugerville in this community? Um, in the community, I have, uh, I've been a, a member of uh, Pflugerville community since about 1985. Um, it's been about 30 years. Um, I have been a citizen. I have gone to church here for the last 30 years. I've been the director for the Chamber of Commerce for five years, uh, early, late 80s, early 90s. Um, and then I have also been a member or I've been employed by the Pflugerville Independent School District for the past 22 years in a, in a lot of different capacities. What was uh, your first impression of the city of Pflugerville and what uh, caused you and your husband to become homeowners in Pflugerville? We, we lived in Austin for a number of years when we first got married. And Lex, who was my first born, uh, was born in 1983. And she was two years old and we were looking for homes one day. And we said, wherever we move is where our children, and we didn't know how many we were gonna have at that time, but we ended up having two, a boy and a girl. Wherever we move is where we will stay for about the next 14 or 15 years because we wanted them to stay in one school for their entire school career. And so we started looking around and we thought, where can we stay for 15 years? Where is there a location? And we happened on Pflugerville, very dark, uh, not a whole lot of lights. It was, I felt like I was in the boonies. It was very, very country. There was one stoplight in the middle of town. Um, very, very minimal building going on, but there were some new subdivisions and so we found a subdivision called Willow Creek that was about half built out at that time. And we found a house we liked out there. And we liked the school district. We checked into the school district. Um, not to say anything bad about Austin schools, but we really were concerned. They were busing at that time all over Austin and I didn't want to put my little five-year-old on a bus and send them 30 miles across Austin. So. Uh, we decided that wherever we, we landed, we wanted community schools and we wanted them to be able to walk and ride their bike. And so that's why we found Pflugerville. After a few years, you decided you were going to um, become employed or mm -hmm. to do something. And mm -hmm. so you uh, worked with the Chamber of Commerce. Tell mm -hmm. us what the Chamber was like in the early days of... Um, uh, early days, I took a, I took a part-time job with the Chamber. I was called the Chamber Representative back then. I worked from 9 to 1, uh, Monday through Friday. My child, uh, my second child then, by that time, we went to a little Mother's Day out, and Lex was already in school by that time. And um, so I says, okay, I can, I can go out for half time. I enjoyed talking to people. Uh, I loved Pflugerville by that time. I had been there for a couple of years, learned a lot about it, um, enjoyed Deutschenfest and all the German uh, events that happened in Pflugerville. And I being German myself, I kind of just felt like this was really a, a nice niche for me to, to land. And I interviewed for the position, they offered me the position, and there was less than 100 members of the Chamber of Commerce when I first started. By the time I left in five years, we had over doubled that amount and we were over 200 members of the Chamber of Commerce. And it was a, it was a very uh, fledgling, I mean, it, it started just very, very small and a lot of people didn't even have an office. The first time Cliff Avery took me for a walk around town, that's what we did, we walked around town. And I said, where's the office for the chamber? And he said, well, we're looking for it right now. So it really wasn't a, they didn't have really a home. Uh, we landed in the building that was on Main Street right across from Dodge City Steakhouse, which is now the city offices. 
and we officed out of the very front room. The front room, because the, the rest of it wasn't even finished out, to my knowledge. The only room that was finished in that building was, was the front room. So um, we took over kind of a very small location and we started building what we thought was, what is Pflugerville and how are we gonna market Pflugerville? Because uh, back in the late 80s, we had that really large downturn, that economic downturn, and all housing stopped and people stopped coming. And so we had to market Pflugerville and we had to get people to come back. And so that's what we did. So did you uh, develop brochures? And we what did. was the message that you uh, tried? Get that Pflugerville time? feeling. We sell get that Pflugerville feeling um, over and over and over again. The bumper stickers went out, the maps went out. People didn't even know where Pflugerville was, much less sometimes how to pronounce it. Um, everybody still thought Pflugerville was a very funny name um, and uh, uh, it misspelled, mispronounced, uh, didn't know what to do with it. And, um, but the maps were a huge hit. People would call the chamber all the time. We would make up packets to send out all over Texas. Um, we marketed to a lot of businesses. Some did come, some didn't. But mostly we were trying to get people to move back out to Pflugerville because it, uh, the economy had fallen. The subdivision I lived in probably went for almost five years without being totally built out. Um, my husband and I, you know, when you move into a brand new house, you don't have any money. And so for the weekends, we would take Lex in the little uh, buggy and we would go look at all the houses that nobody lived in in Willow Creek because they just sat in the ground. For years, some of them sat, and um, but as as the chamber grew, and people started coming out and starting, we knew that we would grow with the school district. There was no doubt about it, and the schools were so good that we knew that the schools would continue to grow. And um, when the economy kind of started to pick back up, so did the builders, and the builders came back out, and then we started to grow again but we definitely had a lull for about a year or two. But special events, we threw um, our fair share of special events, street dances, uh, bingos, um, out at Winnie Mae Murkison's house. We loved that. That was a great special event center. We had, we had a wonderful party out there at her best little whorehouse uh, for the chamber. Hundreds of people showed up for that. They just wanted to be out there with her. Um, but just wonderful, wonderful events that brought people out to Pflugerville all the time to get that Pflugerville feeling, so. Do you uh, recall uh, any interesting calls from your promotion that you got from people uh, out of town that were genuinely interested in maybe coming to relocate their business in Pflugerville? I'm trying to think if there were any business calls. We got daily calls from people that wanted, especially information about the school district. You know, they wanted to know, you know, what, what are the scores? You know, what is the, what's the facilities like in Pflugerville? What, you know, I'm trying to think about any particular businesses. I know, I know while I was there, we, we did get something that I thought was really great for our school, for our, our community and that was our nursing home facility that came in while I was there with the chamber. Um, for whatever reason, and I don't know the politics that was behind this, they had not granted any new nursing home, um, what's the word I guess I'm looking for? Permits. Yeah, it, there were no permits given for any new nursing home facilities. The one in Pflugerville was one of the very few that, that he actually was granted that brand new nursing home facility that he could build out there. And he was gonna build a really nice nursing home facility and then um, the assisted care right next to it. And so um, that, was a, that, was a great, that was a great call because I knew that that was gonna be a, a facility that was gonna be needed down the road. And we were excited about getting that in. So, um, but you know, nothing, nothing as great as uh, the water park now that's <laughs> out, on, out on the, 
the uh, toll road or anything like that, all of that is just very exciting that's taking place now because we were very small. How did the uh, chamber, chamber participate in the Deutschen Fest? Uh, the chamber, you know, definitely participated, but the city was really the one that was just super, super involved. Um, I mean, we would advertise. I got involved with Deutschen Fest um, in the 90s because my husband and I and Haywood Ware, who was the mayor back then, we all um, uh, uh, chaired the event. And um, that's, a, that's a big party to put on uh, for a about a week, week's time. Uh, we did a lot of advertising. I know the chamber, um, I'm trying to think what all, I mean, there was always a, uh, a run that went with it in the Parks and Rec. I know Glenn Holzer in the Parks and Rec always put on the run uh, before the actual event, but then there was always the uh, wonderful parade that took, took part that morning, and then you had all the different dancing and the, the uh, events that would go on. The chamber uh, probably didn't have as big of a part in the Deutschen Fest as I just became personally um, engaged with. So after you were a volunteer. Uh, I volunteered. And, uh, you had to uh, uh, plan the bands that would, uh, the events that, what were some of Absolutely. the events that uh, were at the Deutschen Fest on the stage? Boy, I'm trying to think of some of the events that happened. Um, Ooh, now you're now you're really digging back into my brain. They had the German singers. I they think. always had yes, they always had a German polka band, or they had a, a lot of uh, country western bands. Uh, now sometimes the chamber would put on an event. We had lots of street dances, and sometimes we would try to attach a street dance to the Deutschen Fest in close proximity because we knew that it, the hype was kind of coming for for Deutschen Fest. And, you know, the debonairs were always the big name, you know, for the street dance. Got to have the debonairs out there. I remember uh, when, I guess it was a Saturday night, um, the chamber got the, got the electricity pole out in front of the bank, and we always gated off a huge section of downtown because Princess Craft was always there to the left and then the bank to the right. And um, people would actually, the kids, because the debonairs was a big kid band, and they would really start circling Pflugerville probably three to four hours before the street dance would ever start, you know, and then the Debonair's bus would pull up. And uh, that night, I want to say we had close to 2,000 people in the middle of Pflugerville for the street dance, probably, well, the biggest street dance that I was aware of. And uh, it, was, it was fun. We had a great time. And, uh, it was just a great way to pull people out to see Pflugerville. Anytime we could get a few thousand people out to see Pflugerville, it was, it was a big success for us. Well, and you mentioned um, uh, the family feeling in um, mm -hmm. Pflugerville uh, and the street dance and the Deutschen Fest was a way that uh, the citizens of all ages participated. Uh, Absolutely. People loved our bingos too. It was just hilarious. We started doing bingos at Pfluger Hall and it brought all kinds of people out on Friday nights. We did Friday night uh, bingo, and I know now the Lions Club has taken on some of those bingo events. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're great fundraisers, but yet they're just really kind of good, clean fun. I know, you know, Dwayne Blakesley loved to call bingo for us. Uh, Ray Parker called some bingo for us. Um, it was just really, uh, I, Cliff Avery, you know, these are, these are just the names that really uh, made a huge difference back then because they really loved this town. Ray Parker sold insurance here forever and Cliff was involved in everything. And um, Dwayne, I think, and his wife, I don't know if they still have the accounting. Yeah, they're, you know, they're just your real, your real solid foundation people that really wanted to build Pflugerville into what it is today. The businesses and uh, when you came to Pflugerville and in your, your work, uh, tell us about uh, there was uh, the Gaddy's food, mm. uh, feed store, feed store. And Tim's Nursery. So these were locally grown businesses. Mm -hmm. Tell me about their owners and the, the products that they offered. Um, well, back then, and you know, as I was telling you before, you, when you're a brand new homeowner, 
uh, you always are trying to find the nursery in town because you're putting in plants and trees and and so the two places in town that we always went to and I guess we were there every weekend was green and growing and then we go to Gaddy's feed store and uh, we also had pets and so we would always look for our pet items and dog food and whatever over at Gaddy's feed and um, there you know when you when you come into small towns and kind of like the jewelry store Mr. Hawkins with the jewelry store and um, you you find people that are um, just great people they're and they're fun to talk to they're not people that have uh, some place to be you could tell that they were the true Fliggerville people and they would talk to you for hours on end and so if you thought you were going to get out of Gaddy's feed or maybe green and growing in 15 minutes that wasn't going to happen or Mr. Hawkins jewelry store so you really had to know that you if you're going in there you're going to spend probably at least an hour because you know they want to talk to you for a while also the um, the lumber company you know that was downtown love the lumber company downtown um, and Mr. Feebig was here. Oh, Mr. Feebig was there and then uh, the UPS store that was across the street and and if you went into Feebig's lumber company there was always at least five or six farmers in the back especially if it was raining outside like it is today because they couldn't be on the tractor so they needed some place and there was no donut store in town so they would be in the back and they would be telling all their stories with their coffee in their hand and they they would be talking about what they were gonna do next week when the sun came up mm -hmm. and so it was oh, it was great small town oh uh, way so small town how did you get funding for the chamber the members had dues the members had dues absolutely and then um, we had to fundraise or else we wouldn't stay alive and so our fundraisers were our lifeline and so we I'm trying to think of probably some of the biggest, the biggest fundraisers we had were our bingo, our uh, street dances, which brought in a lot of money sometimes. Um, we did sell maps of the city. Uh, I don't think we sold the bumper stickers. I think those were just freebies. I can't remember. We gave out a lot of things. Um, trying to think of what else, but mostly our, our dues. For our and so that's why the the membership had to rise. We had to we had to definitely get out there, and get more and more people because you didn't have to be a business in order to join. You could actually just join as a citizen of Pflugerville, and so we had two different types of. of if my memory is correct, yeah, you could have a, just an individual membership. I remember that, or you could have a business membership, and so and it wasn't a lot of money. Um, back then, uh, we just we were on a shoestring budget, and we we lived from one fundraiser to the next. And so, as we would plan our year, we would have to determine, okay, here's our budget for the year. Our budget's very small, and here's how much our our fundraisers are going to have to make in order for us to keep going, in order for us to to survive another year. But um, we always seemed to survive and of course we had no rent. Uh, I don't know how or how we got that, how we actually got that office space, uh, but we didn't have any rent in the office and so. And our utilities? You know, that's a good question. I, I wonder about that too. I think somebody was probably footing the bill for the utilities back then. Our overhead was, was probably my salary, which was a little bit of, um, I was doing it because I loved it. And it was fun. Um, Fliggerville was basically a bedroom community, mm -hmm. and with uh, commuters going to uh, Austin, they could do shopping outside on their way home. Right. And so sometimes uh, new businesses struggled. Mm -hmm. They would open, and you know, uh, the survival was maybe 50 yeah, 50. Maybe even less than that uh -huh. uh, for a long time. It was very difficult to keep a business alive out here in Pflugerville. You know, we laughed for a long time. We said, if you open a Mexican restaurant, you'll stay open. But that was about it. Everything else either needed to be a service, a dental office, you know, a doctor's office. Uh, services were what we really needed. When we saw places like the orthodontist come in and things like that, that was great. 
uh, when you saw places like dress shops try to make it. Um, any kind of clothing store, anything like that, really had a difficult, difficult time. It was very difficult. Um, and we did whole things like um, we held a couple of events. I, I remember in Windermere Center, when that was the brand new center down there, and we would actually have the businesses come in and people could come in and see what was available in Pflugerville uh, to try to um, advertise for them and get their name out because, you know, there's always that you need to stay in, in business for at least six months before anybody even knows you exist. Well, some people don't have six months worth of uh, funding underneath their belt that they can stay in existence for six months where they can't, where they don't have to make any, any profit. Um, so there was a lot of turnover right at the beginning. I can name you hundreds of businesses that had turnovers here. Um, uh, but for a while, we just didn't have the amount of people to support the business. The business wanted to come and they wanted to be part of Pflugerville, but we didn't have enough homes in the ground yet to actually support that kind. And knowing the fact that we were a bedroom community, a lot of times we still are a bedroom community because they're commuting, they're commuting to Austin and back, a lot of our businesses would close at 5 o'clock or close at 5.30. We had to explain to them, your biggest pull is between 5 and 7. It's when they're starting to come back into town. And, and some of them didn't want to stay open that late. So it was, it's, it was kind of a difficult thing for them to have to wrap their heads around that the cars were coming back in between 5 and 7. And um, so... It is, it is, it, it was very difficult uh, those first few years to get the small businesses to be able to stay. One of the popular eating places was the Dodge City mm -hmm. Steakhouse. Wonderful. Where, uh, that was there during your Oh, time. absolutely. And um, they had people from all over Central Texas that would come eat their chicken fried steak. Oh, they did. They did. Them and Charlie's Steakhouse. Absolutely. It, they, I think uh, Dodge City probably did a great job at advertising for themselves also. They had a great product. Um, they were also in one of the only existing buildings, probably, you know, on the main street that was renovated and, and looked wonderful. When you walked in, I was at several parties at Dodge City where we would go to the second floor and... Um, and they, they just had a great product, too, and it would draw uh, from Austin. People liked coming fr from Austin to go to Dodge City Steakhouse. It was outside of town. It felt like they were getting away a little bit. Um, but they did a lot of advertising. Um, and um, I think that, that that probably made for their long tenure down on Main Street. Uh, I know a lot of people still bemoan the fact that Dodge City Steakhouse isn't there any longer. They they miss that that in um, in downtown. And but then it became the European Bistro. The which Bistro, was a different mm -hmm. menu. right? And I I enjoyed that too. I did go there a couple of times. Um, and is it still? And then I I don't know. It's not there. Anymore. Not there anymore. Okay, I wasn't okay. sure. Okay. Hadn't now been there in a while. Mayor Jeff Coleman's uh, State Farm Agency is in. Is it really? Okay, I was not aware because I know that other insurance companies, I know the Colonex had an insurance company right downtown for a long time and then they owned the German uh, little gift store for a while that was on the corner. So it was, uh, uh, the lumber company transitioned to Hanover's? Hanover's uh, Lumber Company. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and became a... Uh, then it came, became the, the little nightclub that it is today. In downtown Pflugerville. <laughs> In downtown Pflugerville. Which is definitely uh, an after five. Business. It is, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I think it really, um, it supports a lot of weekend people that like to come out here. They, Pflugerville has, has this uh, vibe that we're, we're a good place to go bicycling. I think motorcycling, uh, I know that whenever the motorcyclists come to Austin, they have the big uh, June motorcycle event. Uh, they travel outside Pflugerville a lot, and you will see hundreds of motorcycles outside of Hanover's on Saturday and Sunday that weekend. And um, it's a, I think it's a destination for the weekend. 
and I think that's how they survive. I do notice I go home that way a lot, and I notice Hanover's starting on Thursday night. They really, the clientele starts to really move up quite a bit. Uh, they also have special events there because I know that they have sandpit volleyball tournaments. They have a lot of things going on there that has and a, a huge draw. Very large stage for yeah, bands. Loud within the neighborhood, Can be loud sometimes within the neighborhood. I don't, I don't dislike that though. I think that that's part of the feeling of a small town when you have that live music going on. And um, it's, I, I think it gives some, somewhat of an ambiance to downtown to hear music in the air. I like it. But. So uh, your children actually grew up in Pflugerville. What were some of the uh, activities they were able to enjoy outside of school within the city? Um, oh, the swimming pools, all the parks and recreation uh, facilities that were available back then. They had, we only had one pool back then, and I know now we have several. Uh, but the large swimming pool that they built while we were living in Pflugerville was just a huge destination for my kids. They were both on the Piranha swim team. They loved to do that. Um, the hike and bike trails, we were on every day. I, I cannot tell you there wasn't a day that I wasn't either walking my dog or the kids and I weren't on bicycles on the hike and bike trail. It's, it's large. I don't know how wide it is, but you know, it's not your normal sidewalk. It's probably eight feet wide, and it's just a lovely, lovely walk, and it's just a lot to look at. Every time you walk, you get to see something different. A lot of nature around. and Love it, um, yes. Uh, very safe. Very safe. Love, love the, I never felt like um, that, I, that there was ever a time in Pflugerville that I was walking the hike and bike trail that there was something that I should be fearful of. And I, I walk the whole trail, and so it's a pretty long trail. They also took part in a lot of activities. My son loves soccer, my daughter loved gymnastics, and there is all of that uh, around the area. Lovely, you know, Capital Gymnastics up on the highway. They have lots of great trainers over there. Uh, and I know there's a lot, lot more than just Capital out there now, but back then, Capital was the only one. Uh, but there always seemed to be something to do in Pflugerville or around Pflugerville that my kids and I could participate in. And with the schools, there was always something to do. And um, we, um, we just, I don't know, we didn't have to go too many other places. I didn't find myself going to Austin very often anymore after I came Your out. Your husband also volunteered to uh, serve on the city council mm -hmm. for a period of time. He did. Uh, any recollections of uh, that period of time of service? Um, it was right at the beginning of the 90s, and I think that's how he got kind of uh, hooked into Haywood Ware, because I believe the, um, the mayor of, of Pflugerville was Haywood at that time. And Haywood was just a really big, he, he really wanted to uh, advertise Pflugerville a lot. He loved advertising Pflugerville. He was just proud of Pflugerville, and his kids went to Pflugerville School District. Um, and so that year, around the 90s, uh, it was the Deutschenfest time, and I think he talked my husband and I into co-chairing Deutschenfest with him. And that year, uh, I think it was the first year that we added on the huge carnival aspect to the Deutschenfest. Uh, Haywood had, you know, there was always like, if you ever ask Haywood, well, what, you know, what about this or what about that? He always knew someone that did that. You know, we says, well, what about a carnival? He goes, oh, I got a carnival. I can get you a carnival, you know. And so, of course, you know, here, here Deutschenfest came and here comes this great carnival that really added a lovely aspect to Deutschenfest because you had, you had the bandstands and you had all the great little booths and everything that people put up and you had all the wonderful food going on. But the carnivals really brought in, I would say, that high school, middle school age group. They loved riding the rides, and so it really brought in that great thing for them to do to keep them busy all, all afternoon while maybe the parents got to go listen to some German polkas going on and the, the little kids could play in the park. And so it was, it was really a nice, nice addition, but I don't remember anything particular that James 
um, except for the parks. The parks was a, was a very big project that went on for years because I think what they were trying to do was they were trying to incorporate all of downtown into this wonderful type of venue that you could walk it. They wanted you to be able to really walk all of Flutterville and be able to go from one subdivision to the next and you could walk to school. I think that was the hugest draw. That was just huge. Um, my kids were all able to walk to elementary and to middle school. They never, I really never had to pick them up unless it was bad weather. They walked home every day. And, you know, in this day and time and you go, yeah, the kids aren't, aren't getting the exercise they need. Golly, my kids were always on a bike or always on the hike and bike trail walking. So never worried about them getting their exercise for the day. They were, they loved it. They loved being out there. You had a career change then and went back into education. Yeah. So um, you uh, became an art teacher at Flutterville High School. Talk mm -hmm. about your uh, decades of service in PISD. Um, I, I transitioned from, I, I always knew I'd go back to teaching one day. And on the board uh, of my chamber was uh, Larry Bradley. And Larry Bradley was the principal at Flutterville High School. And I just happened to mention to him one, one day, it was, I want to say it was in June, I said, hey, Larry, if you ever need an art teacher, I said, I'm certified. Um, and back then it was, you had to make sure you still had, you had taken your TCAT because that was when all the teachers had to be taking the test. And I said, as a matter of fact, I took the TCAT about a year ago, passed it. And so if you need an art teacher, just let me know. I'd be interested. And he goes, you know, he says, by the way, he goes, I got an opening. And so I said, well, I'd like to interview. I interviewed with Debbie Bentley and I was offered the position for that next August. Uh, got into the art department and it was me and two other art teachers. And I couldn't quite break totally away from the city uh, the first couple of years. And so I got the other girls involved in doing some murals out in the middle of Pflugerville and we just kind of had a good time. And, we drug a lot of kids out with us and we painted a mural on the side of one of the buildings that stayed up probably for 10 years. And then we also painted another mural underneath a bridge because I liked walking and so I wanted to see it anyway. And so we painted a big old fish mural underneath one of the bridges that stayed for quite a while until, until the bridge was renovated. And, um, and after about six or seven years in the art department, I decided to go back and get my master's in mid-management. And um, Larry, again, was instrumental and, and turned me into one of his assistant principals at Pflugerville High School. And I stayed a grade level principal for about seven years. And after that became the curriculum and instruction principal. And, and so I've been a principal at Pflugerville for now 15 years. Many times uh, the students in uh, PISD are the best ambassadors for the city. Oh, absolutely. They travel all over. So uh, tell about some of the excursions or the involvements that um, students want to be on Pflugerville High School. Okay. Uh, one that really um, brings to mind, and, and there are many, there are very, very, very many. Um, I'm also in charge of our AP, I'm not in charge of the AP ambassadors, but I am the assistant principal in charge of AP. Dixie Ross, who is totally instrumental in all the AP, uh, which is what we call advanced placement at Pflugerville High School. It's the courses that students take that they want to be really involved and they want to, they want to make sure that they're college ready is the bottom line. We have, um, Dixie puts together a group of them every year. They're called our AP Ambassadors. Um, they go out to schools. They go out to the community. They, they talk to people about the AP program at Pflugerville High School. Um, they actually attended, I remember one year in particular, Dixie got them all dressed up, and they always get dressed up. Uh, took them to the Hilton uh, over by the airport, and they spoke to a lot of teachers uh, from around Texas and even outside Texas. We had pretty much a, a national group there, but spoke to uh, the group about getting all the students involved in AP courses. 
and how important it was to get your low socioeconomic, your economically disadvantaged, your um, every every group, uh, every breakout group in your high school involved in AP courses and how important it was. And they were actually the um, uh, the team that went and spoke. And it was really interesting because people would walk up to Dixie Ross and they'd go, I know you, I've seen you on the internet, what are you doing now, you know? And, and Dixie far exceeds the state of Texas. People all over the world know Dixie Ross's name. They know what she's done in, in her field and she's in the field of math. Uh, she teaches calculus at, at high school. And, but they know about her and they know about how, how she teaches students and how she pushes students to be better. And uh, she loves especially taking uh, the economically disadvantaged students and showing them new world. It's just a new world. And um, she loves taking the AP ambassadors out and showing them off. I think she was actually recognized by the President of the United States she was. at the White House. She was. She was. Which is, is amazing. Absolutely. Um, the students also um, played in the state finals in 2007 in mm -hmm. the Alamo Dome, mm -hmm. which was a, a large exposure. Absolutely. And many times at the Irwin Center. Mm -hmm. Many, many times. Basketball. Boys and girls basketball. Right. Both. Mm -hmm. So you have seen the instructional strategies change over time since you began teaching until present day. Yes. Um, Absolutely. Anything you want to say on Delivery oh, delivery of instruction. Delivery of instruction has, has changed greatly. Um, we've had, we have many, many conversations about this, um, but keeping the students engaged every day is always a, a big challenge. And I think that we're looking at more and more um, technology using technology in a lot of ways with the students. They are extremely techno-savvy. Um, they sar far surpass anything that we know. Uh, but using technology inside the classroom because it is gonna be what they know. We've, we've incorporated a lot of online classes where students can get credit for. Um, some students are still you know, I still want the teacher in front of me. I don't want the computer in front of me. And I, I think it needs to be a nice blend of those things because once they go to college, in some coursework, I even know um, my son just finished his master's, he didn't have a choice. He had to go online for several of his courses. Didn't have, he says, Mom, I'd rather have that teacher inside the classroom with me. Uh, but he says, I don't have a choice anymore. Sam Houston is going this way. And so knowing what I know from my own kids going into college, um, we really push to have them see the online type of courses that we offer at Pflugerville High School. It's called Edgenuity. And students take it primarily for remediation if they didn't do well the first time. However, if we have a student that gets a little bit behind, we do use Edgenuity ever, ever so often for the first time that they've actually seen a course. And it's really good training. They need to be able to self-pace themselves. They need to be able to do that course online because I will guarantee them that somewhere down the road in their college career, it will not be an option. They will have to do a course online and they will have to be able to self-pace um, their activities to make sure that they finish by a certain date. And so um, it's, it's a skill that they have to know before they get to college. Volunteerism is uh, important in any organization, whether it's the church or the city, mm -hmm. and obviously in the school is also uh, an important part. We know that uh, we can compare elementary all the way to high school on volunteerism. Mm -hmm. but, uh, what are some of the areas that you've seen profound uh, uh, support with your parents or encouraging support, or, and uh, how has it changed maybe over the 20 years you've been? involved with education? Um, I, I don't think it's changed a whole lot as far as high school goes. I know, and, and you know, and when, you're, when you're in elementary school, you have a lot more parent support. Uh, or Maybe I shouldn't use support, volunteers. Uh, parent volunteers in the elementary grades, they like to come in, you know, when the kids are little. 
and um, it's a little bit more difficult once you get up to the high school level because the curriculum is so difficult. Uh, using them inside of a classroom is close to impossible uh, because of the level um, of the curriculum in the classroom. You know, parents all the time uh, say, oh, I took that in high school. I took biology in high school. And I have to really, I have to really look at them and be very serious when I say, it is not the biology you, you remember. And they say, well, biology doesn't change. I said, oh, yes, but it does. It does change. And the level that we're teaching it is changing. I said, maybe think back to the biology you took in college. I said, it will be closer to that level. It will be much closer to that level. Um, but we love to have people come and volunteer in, in our schools. I know that there's more, uh, a little bit more red tape to be able to volunteer. You do have to go through some, some hoops. And um, we do have some volunteers that love to come in and volunteer with our librarian. We have programs called AVID in our, in our uh, high school. And we do have um, uh, volunteers that come in and tutor our, our teacher, our, our kids. Now they are paid, they, and they're not, not paid at a very high level, but they're paid. And, and, but we love having uh, parents with expertise in the math and science field, or maybe in the English and social studies field, come in and tutor. Um, we also have, we still have the men's group, I believe, with uh, Pflugerville ISD, and we've gotten some great uh, help from the men's club in the past that I'm aware of. Um, we also have, you know, volunteers. I, I look at them as volunteers with um, uh, corporate sponsors. HEB always is good to us. Target is good to us. Um, some, uh, just some, even some, you know, oh, love the coffee places all over town, you know, when, when we're looking to feed the teachers. We feed the teachers all year long. Uh, love um, Starbucks, love Starbucks, but then also love, um, I can't think of the name of it. Dazzle. Thank you, Dazzle downtown, they're phenomenal. We always call on Dazzle and say, hey, you know, we're gonna have this teacher in service, can we, can we get a deal, you know, on the coffee? And they're wonderful about that. Um, you know, the other volunteers that we have um, love the armed forces. We have a lot of help from the Army the Navy, the, they come in all the time and counsel with our kids. They set up um, uh, luncheon type meetings with them. Uh, they came in and helped us even do our last uh, professional development in January. They serviced the teachers with, like we say, dazzle coffee and, and uh, you know, um, breakfast. But they're wonderful. They, um, the last group that came in was the Army. And um, they actually have really supported a lot of our students that we didn't think we're going to make it to the end. And they said, look, you've got to have a high school diploma or we can't accept you. They won't accept GEDs right now. Uh, right now. So um, they've been a huge support to us because kids that really want to get into the military, um, they really will listen to them. So that's a huge volunteer support for us. Um, and I know that I'm forgetting a whole lot of people because we have a lot of support. We're not in this alone. You know, Pflugerville supports us every step of the way. They're, they're a wonderful team for us. And us being the first high school in, in town, and we, we are in the center. I feel like always the center of Pflugerville. Uh, I call us the Pflugerville High School. Um, it's, it's always been very important for us to appreciate the businesses that we have around us because they support all of our teams every, every year. Uh, you know, you look around a baseball field, you look around a football field, you look around tennis courts. They're their signs everywhere. They are putting forth a lot of money every year to keep, keep our kids uh, academically and, um, uh, you know, sporting events. They, they really support us. Well, uh, we're going to close. Is there any um, words of advice that you would like to oh. say uh, regarding the past uh, <laughs> and looking to the future? What do you think Pflugerville has uh, 
to look forward to in the next 5, 10, 50 years ahead? Um, Pflugerville has some great leaders right now. You know, our school has some wonderful leaders that are really looking ahead and, and they have, they care a lot about what happens to Pflugerville and I think that they're, they're looking at the growth, they're trying to stay ahead of that growth and keeping uh, the population and the, the, the school um, in, in a nice even balance and I think that they're, they'll, they'll always stay ahead. Other towns have not been able to do that in such a, um, such a steady pace. I think that Pflugerville has, been, has done an excellent job at that. And I think it's the camaraderie that they, they have between the city and the superintendents that we've had in the past and the one that we have now. And I know that he talks a lot. I know our superintendent talks a lot with people that have lived in Pflugerville for a long time and he really takes a lot of what they have and takes it to heart uh, because they want the best things for Pflugerville. I love the way Pflugerville has managed its growth. That's, uh, that's one thing I, I want to say. Uh, I, I hope that it continues to manage the growth and continue to be the family type of atmosphere that it always has been. I love the fact that the water park came in for the kids. I love all of that around Hendrickson High School. I like the direction that it's moving. Um, and it's, it's, it's the best community it can be outside Austin, Texas. It's, it's really, it's great. Well, that's uh, impressive because, uh, again, in your role, you have traveled uh, uh, to different communities mm -hmm. through your school business and seen um, the facilities, the products, the programs, et cetera. Right, so, right. Thank you very much. We thank you. Your time. Well, thanks, Brenda Jean. It's nice to be here. Is there any